Good day everyone, my name is Tati Lagadia and today we're going to talk about the habit of prayer. But before we start, let me just start with a prayer. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for today. We're so grateful that we are able to do this. We're able to 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 experience you, Lord God. We're able to, to build a relationship with you. We're able to know who you are. We're, we are able to learn who you are, Lord. Lord, may you guide me, continue to lead me, and teach me your words that I will be able to share to them our learnings today about your word. Father, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our Bible verse for today is in Colossians 4, verses 2 to 4. If you are with me, let's read it together. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. May God be praised for the reading of His word. I remember the time when me and my wife was speaking at a youth gathering before COVID happened. And I asked this to the audience, how many times have you asked a friend this question? How can I pray for you? Or what can I pray for you? And I asked them to look at their friends since they were sitting with their friends. And then suddenly some youths were, some youths were like, Ew, kaimo, cringe. And they were cringing to the thought of asking, how can I pray for you or what can I pray for you? Either they cringe because this is their first or maybe, I don't know. But now I am going to ask you that same question. How many times have you asked a co-believer, a friend or a relative this question? How can I pray for you or what can I pray for you? Because today, what we are going to talk about is the habit of praying. And it is a habit that we need to continuously develop because this is a habit that we usually take for granted. We can be people who go to church, enjoys the high hellos with each other, excited to the latest showbiz chica. And yet, how many of us ends our conversation with, how can I pray for you? And some might cringe of doing that. How many of us are intentionally sending a message to fellow believers, to friends, to relatives, just a simple message? How can I pray for you? And the next question is, are we really intentionally praying for them? How's your prayer life? And me too, I'm guilty with this. That's why, as much as possible, I write all specific concerns on my personal notes, like, like what to pray for, what to pray for, or who to pray for. And you see, our prayer life will reflect how we view God. If you don't have any prayer life, it's like saying, we don't need God. If the way you pray is like giving commands to God, what you want is not God. What you want is a genie and a lamp or a servant. And some of us, when our prayers are not answered, we get angry at God. We get frustrated. Diba? Sino ba yung God? Ikaw? And if we only pray in times when we are suffering, then we view God as only a God when we need something. That we can only remember Him when we are suffering. And this is hard because this is what's happening to most of our fellow believers. And some of us think that their prayers are not the concern of the church. Some of us just wanted to keep it for themselves. That this is my life, this is my problem, and the church doesn't need to know. Or that my problem is so small compared to others, that this is the private part of my life, and I can't share it to my pastor or to my discipler. We are too concerned with what will our pastor say or what will others say. 
if this is our mindset as a Christian, we are like people who go to church without loving one another. We are commanded to love God and love others. Now, where is the love there if mag iya ta? And this is reality. And I want us to examine ourselves. Galatians 6.2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That you will obey the law of Christ in helping to carry another's burden. And how can you do this if you yourself find it hard to share with your share your own burdens to others? So tell me how. How will we be able to fulfill the law of Christ, to obey the law of Christ if we can share our burdens? Friends, this is a command. We are not designed to be alone in our burdens. So please don't keep it for yourselves. Failing marriages, family problems, financial problems, health problems. And if you are listening and you are struggling with some of these things, please remember that you have a family in Christ who can pray for you, who can help you carry your burdens. And I know that a lot of us are keeping it for ourselves. Friends, you are not alone. It doesn't matter how small or how big your problem is, but never forget that our God is bigger than anything. As what we shared about the habits of generosity, God gave us gifts to build each other up. Let's build one another. Let's pray and share each other's burdens. I'm sharing this because our passage today is a reminder of who God is in our prayer life. And like any other habits, it takes time to develop. Let's try to go to our verse. Let's go to verse 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Three things that we can learn from this verse. Be persistent in prayer. Be alert in prayer and be grateful in prayer. Now let me ask you, do we have these qualities? Because as Christians, this should be our lifestyle. The Apostle Paul was reminding and encouraging the church in Colossae that in Christ they are already complete. That their salvation is not a set of things that they needed to do and then add Jesus on it. Because the people in Colossae were introduced into believing that Jesus is not enough for their salvation. And the Apostle Paul is reminding them that in Christ, they're already complete. Our salvation is in Christ alone, through Christ alone. That as we follow Christ, as we focus on Christ, it should lead us to bear fruit to transformation, to transform life, to a changed lifestyle, to become more like Him. Christ-likeness. And these qualities should be part of our lifestyle as a follower of Christ. Persistent, alert, and grateful in prayer. Being persistent in prayer in any given circumstances, may it be good or bad, means that God is the first on your mind. It's making God as the center and the primary focus of your life. That in everything, you first talk to God. In every aspect of your life, you first talk to God. This is how persistence looks like. Being persistent in prayers like saying to God every single day, Lord, guide me, for without you I can be lost. Lord, lead me, for without you, I can be strayed. Lord, teach me your word, for without you, I can do this on my own. In short, it's trusting God and denying yourself. 
Lord, di ko mo buhi ni mo. Magsigid yung kong storya niyo, magsigid yung kong duol niyo, magsigid yung kong pangutana niyo kung sa imong will para sa kuha. And personally in my life, I have learned that without Him, I was falling away. All my life, I believe that I can do it on my own. And yet, I was losing this life. And I came to a point that I said to God, if everything that I knew about this life was wrong, then please lead me, Lord. And until now, every day, this is my prayer. Lord, guide me because I don't want to make the same mistake of trusting my own self and losing it. And losing you, Lord. Being persistent in our prayer life reflects how we view God in our life. Is God the center of our life or do we focus on ourselves? Do we focus on our own capabilities or do we focus on who God is? To come before God every single day is declaring that He is our Lord and King every single day. To come before God in every single decisions that you make is declaring that He is the Lord and King in every decisions that you make. And to come before God in every situations, in any uncertainties, is believing of who God is. And to stop doing this, to stop praying, is like saying, I don't believe you, Lord. I will just do this on my own. And this is what the world is telling us. My life, my choice. This world will distract you. And yet the Apostle Paul knows how challenging it is to develop this habit. You see, one of our challenges, we easily get distracted. And Apostle Paul was reminding the church in Colossae that they need to be alert. Watchful. Being watchful or alert means being self-controlled or sober-minded. Let's try to read 1 Peter 4.7. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. The end of all things is near. Be kingdom-minded. Keep your eyes on God. Focus on God. This life in this fallen world will distract you. Keep your eyes on God. Focus on God. This life will make you feel busy at the start of your day. It will make you forget who the Lord is, who our King is. This world will make you believe that you are the Lord of your life. And this verse is saying, do not focus on this life because this is going to end soon. And being self-controlled and sober-minded means it's not based on feeling but based on persistence. Nga kanunay, nabisan pag unsang kahintang padayon. Being self-controlled means you have the qualities of time management, organizing your prayer time. You know specifically what to pray for, who to pray for, and being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need to be alert in prayer, not to be strayed on focusing on this life, but focusing on God, focusing to God. A lot of things are happening now in and are happening now in 2020. It showed us that everything in this world will fade away. It showed us that tomorrow is uncertain. Some families have experienced asking these questions: "Na baka mi kanon, asaman mi mangita anig pagkaon, na baka kuy trabaho na balikan." And some tried to look for their own solution. Try to focus on their own capability without going to God. And some, some of us, went to our knees and prayed. For people who have went on their way without asking God, if you try to ask them about their year, 
you will constantly hear them on self, on about self. Akong gibuhat, akong paningkamot, all about me, me. But for people who, persist, who persistently pray to God, you will constantly hear them about who their God is. You will constantly hear them say, God is so good. Praise God. When me and my wife was remembering the things that happened last year, kayong mag-gud mig kapuya de ato eh. Grabiha, kakapuya to. Hike while nagdala o grocery. Hike while nagpasa nung isa kagalong na tubig. Uncertain if makatrabaho pa. But you know what? We have peace in our hearts. Wa mi ga-expect nga karon nga nag-reminis mi. Wa mi ga-expect nga nakaya to na mo. Kaya nga rajud mi. Si Lord rajud ato tanan. Ikaw rajud ato tanan, Lord. And we are just so grateful to God and using other believers to share our burdens even until now. You see, a life that is fully surrendered to God is a life where we can fully experience God. Let me repeat that. A life that is fully surrendered to God is a life where we can fully experience God. When the Apostle Paul was writing this, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. He was in prison. Nasa sa prisuhan. And he was saying this, be grateful in prayer. No matter where you are, no matter what situation you are in, be grateful. The Apostle Paul was not focused on this world. He was not focused on his current situation na nasa sa prisuhan. Instead, he was using his situation to point people to God, to share the gospel. He was focused on God. And he was encouraging the believers to focus on God. You see, when we focus too much on our situation or focus on how hard our lives is, suddenly we blame people, we blame the situation. Ang ani ra man gud mi. Diri ra man gukuni dako. Nayo na ni ko tungod nila, tang tungod niya. Kumo na sumpay. You see, as what I have mentioned a while ago, the apostle was reminding the people in Colossae that in Christ they are already complete so focus on Christ. Focus on God. Focus on your identity in Christ. Murag ID ba? When you have a driver's license, you are identified that you know how to drive. Diba? You see, when we are identified as someone in Christ, we are also identified as someone who is persistent in prayer, as someone who is alert in prayer, as someone who is grateful in prayer. And being grateful will protect our hearts, will protect your heart. It will protect you from being proud. Being grateful humbles your heart. A person who is grateful will only boast about his God, about what God has been doing into his life, because he knows that his life was paid in full. Let me read to you 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. And in the life of the Apostle Paul, did he blame the situation? Did, did he blame the guards? Did he blame anyone? He was so focused on God that in every situation, he sees it as an opportunity to share the gospel. An opportunity to magnify God. And that is why you can always say, be grateful. But how do we develop these habits? 
How? Be intentional. Be intentional in your prayer life. Intentionally start your day with a prayer and end your day with a prayer. Like any other habits, you have a choice. And it starts with your willingness. And if you say that you are a Christian, that you love Christ, I want you to read John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I want us to examine ourselves, to focus our identity on our identity in Christ. And on the next verse in verse 3, at the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account which I am in prison. Let's pause on that for a while. The Apostle Paul was saying, pray also for us. We are called to pray. We are also called, called to pray with others. And we are also called to pray for others. This is where we can share our burdens, our prayers. And this removes the focus out on the self. You will know the burdens of others. You will know their needs. You will know where you can help them. You will know how to pray for them. Remember that we are commanded to love God and love people. And as people of God, we help each other carry their burdens. And this is vice versa. You will be able to ask them to pray for you. Now, can you imagine the early church in Acts? In Acts 4.34, and chapter 4, verse 34, it said there that there was not a needy person among them. Because when someone is in need and another person can supply that need, they are willing to share it. Why? Because they are so focused on God that they understand lordship, that they understand that everything that they have is not their own. And I encourage everyone to pray for one another. Pray for our missionaries. Pray for our church planters. Pastor Gab in Ormok. Pray for him. Pray for our church leaders. Carry each other's burdens. And if you see that there is a need and you can help, act on it. Okay? If there's a need during your prayer time, if there's a need where you can help, then offer your help. Extend a hand. And on the following verse, let's continue. The Apostle Paul was saying, Pray for us that God may open to us a door for the word, or God will give us a good opportunity to preach his message, to preach the gospel. Now remember that Paul was in prison, yet he was asking the church to pray that he will be able to preach the gospel. Okay? And I want us to I want us to imagine and picture our picture ourselves being in a prison. Okay, imagine that there's no guarantee that we still that we will still live tomorrow. Imagine that you are with Paul. Kapag mo prisuhan. Are you going to ask people to pray that you will be able to preach the gospel sa prisuhan? Or are you going to ask them to pray na makagawas na ka para makashare ka sa gospel sa gawas? Really? You see the difference in any situations, in any circumstances. If you are focused on God, your mindset will always be about sharing who our God is. It's always about sharing the gospel. It's always about Him. In any sungug, in any makalagot, in any makasapot, in any makalain, your mindset should always be how can I show you God or how can I show Christ likeness? In all our prayers, make it a habit to point people to God. Why do we pray for wisdom? To lead people to God. Why do we pray for provision? 
to lead people to God. We pray for all these things to preach the gospel that people will know who God is. And it is God who opens opportunities to preach the gospel. If you will be invited to speak a birthday, a wedding, or even a funeral, those are opportunities to preach the gospel. How about social media? It's a very good opportunity to share the gospel there. And I, rem- I just want to share to you a story about one of our youth. She was asking me to do a Bible study sa ilang balay to reach out her nanay. And I told her that we will pray that God will open opportunities to preach the gospel. And to pray that she will have the wisdom and the strength to share the gospel in case that God will open that opportunity. And by the grace of God, that prayer was answered. And she's been handling Bible studies with her family. What an amazing testimony. God listened to our prayers. In anywhere, in whatever situation, focus on God. Focus on sharing the gospel. You see, when we focus to God, it's no longer about us. It's all about Him. As what FEBC um, DYFR 98.7 tagline is, and I quote, Communicating Christ on air, online, and on the ground. End quote. And you get to wonder, Pita, no? In any situation, in any place, in wherever you are, preach the gospel. Communicating, communicating Christ on air, online, on the ground. In anywhere. Pray that God will open a door to preach the gospel. And in the following verse, Paul said, That I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. In another translation, the Apostle Paul was saying that he may speak in such a way as to make it clear. In short, pray for clarity. Pray for clarity. Pray that we will be bold in proclaiming the gospel. That we will be clear in sharing the gospel. That God will open their hearts and understand the gospel. The gospel is not just for us to keep. Para taguan lang. The gospel is meant to be shared. Go and make disciples gani, di ba? Ayon sa gayo. And I know that some of you might say, Ang saan pag start pass or kuya kay madlok man mi? Mi kabalo. Ask God for wisdom. Pray for it. Practice it. If your discipler, if the one who is discipling you is using um, a material, one-to-one discipleship material, use it too. Try it with co-believers. Share it with co-believers. Make it to a point to practice all the things that you have learned from Bible studies, Um, listening to preaching, small groups. And always remember that when Jesus said, go and make disciples, He also said, He will be with us to the end of age. Remember that God is with you. Have you ever tried the game, Pass the Message? Pass the Message ba? We tried this game when I was in high school. And... If we are not clear with our message, it will change the meaning of the message. And in my experience, it did. It's the same with the gospel. If it's unclear, it might not be the gospel that we are sharing. And that's dangerous. It's like distorting the word of God. Murag chismis. One of our youth when one of our youth had an accident, it was a vehicular accident. Nabangga sila, kusukay pagkabangga, and then it created a loud sound. But ang chismis sa silingan, di pusil sila. 
Dari orang ini, na bangga sila ngang chismis kay di posil sila. You see how dangerous it is? Nagpanik tawa ng parents sa youth. How much more in sharing the Word of God? That is why it is important to study the Word of God, to ask for wisdom, to pay attention, so that we can be clear in sharing the Gospel. If our salvation in Christ alone does not lead us into Christ-likeness, into transformation, into producing fruit, I encourage us, each of us, to examine our hearts. Come into repentance. Come into repentance. Being persistent in prayer means God is the center of your life. Being alert in prayer means God is the focus of your life. And being grateful in prayer means God is the giver of your life. Our prayer life will reflect how we view God. So how's your prayer life? And if you don't know how to start developing these habits, you can intentionally start your day with a prayer and end your day with a prayer. You can even join us in our Wednesday prayer meeting. You can join a prayer group. Or you can send your prayer request to people who mentored you or or people or you you are mentoring, you're discipling. Or you can reach out to us. Send us a message. Now remember that in any habits, the willingness will start with you. But in any bisag unsa pa nga habits imong gusto i-develop. Nga mamino ka sa laing tao, makaingon ka bitaw no, I think inanglan na nako. The willingness will start with you. It's gonna be your choice, your decision. Let me just pray for you. Father in heaven, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the things that we have committed. If we have failed, O Lord, if we have failed to glorify you in our lives, forgive us, Father. Teach us your ways and guide us. Guide us, O Lord, because without you we are nothing, we are no one. Guide us because we we can easily be distracted by this world, be strayed away from you. Help us, O Lord, to come before you, Father, and to ask for forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed. Teach us your ways, O Lord. Use us mightily for your kingdom, O Lord. May you continue to protect all those people who are missionaries, church planters. May you continue to protect Pastor Gabin or Mok. Guide him, Father. And we pray for all the leaders of the church. Especially nga nabalik ng Sunday, um, Sunday congregation, face to face. We pray for protection, O Lord. We pray that you continue to give them the strength to serve. And we pray for people we pray for those people, Lord God, to reach out, to share the gospel. And even, Karun, Lord God, that we are staying at home, we pray that for those youth, we pray that they will be able to have the strength and the wisdom, Lord God, to share the gospel to their families. And all these prayers, O oh Lord, I want to offer it back to you, Father. Let it be your will, and only your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, Amen.